Hi guys, I'm just doing a short video today. I'm at the end of a day of work with clients and um, there's been a topic that's been coming up several times over the last couple of weeks and months. But actually as I reflect, I realise that this is a topic that often comes um, up when people um, are speaking to me about relationships and in particular about you know toxic or abusive relationships that they might have been in in the past. And so the topic is one that is what I call covert manipulation and it's a cycle of abuse that can happen when you're in a relationship or interacting with someone that is manipulative um, but it's very underhanded, it's an underhanded type of manipulation. And the conversation that I often hear goes something along the lines of, um, you know, my ex-partner or my husband or my wife or, you know, someone that they're in relationship with often calls me controlling, but I don't think I'm controlling. But I hear it so often from my partner or ex-partner that I'm starting to wonder if I actually am or not. And so, you know, as I'm talking about this, you might feel familiar with this with this topic. You might have heard something similar to that in, in your own life. So if this feels familiar to you, or even if you've got relatives or friends that have mentioned this type of dynamic to you as well, this may be a video that could be really helpful for you. Um, I'm going to follow this up with an article um, and also a little chart on... Um, called the cycle of narcissistic abuse and so it goes a little into um, those narcissistic type traits and um, how they can manifest um, in relationship as well. So coming back to this um, topic of covert manipulation, underhanded manipulation, in fact all manipulation has an aspect of covert or underhandedness to it of course, it's the nature of manipulation. But this topic that I'm talking about seems to have an even deeper layer of manipulation um, in there, uh, a deeper layer of kind of this hidden or, um, you know, underhanded energy to it. And so people that um, speak to me about this topic and they bring up this idea about, you know, I didn't think I was a controlling person, but now my partner or ex-partner is telling me so often that I am, I'm beginning to doubt myself, I'm beginning to think that I really am controlling, but I kind of don't think that I am, but I hear it so often that I'm a little unsure now. And so what can be coming um, up in this scenario, in this situation, is that sometimes we... Um, um, we get kind of baited into um, certain behaviours by someone we might be in relationship with. So it kind of goes a little like this. Um, person A is controlling in a very underhanded or covert type way. And the way that they control is they will often um, not do anything or they'll, you know, be very silent. They might give the silent treatment or their inaction creates a response or a reaction from the person that they're in relationship with and so it kind of forces or puts the ball in the other person's court to make them say something or do something so a classic example and I'm not saying that this is abusive behavior or narcissistic behavior by any stretch of the imagination but if we just take a very simple example um, to um, kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about here so person a um, maybe both people in the relationship are both in full-time work or and perhaps they both have a family, um, children that they're, they're sharing the care of. Um, and so they both have equal um, responsibilities on their shoulders. But person A doesn't, do, doesn't give any help around the house, for example, doesn't do any housework. And just continues in this non-action, this very kind of avoidant type of behaviour for a period of time. And after a while, person B starts to go, hang on a minute, I'm the only one doing any of the home duties and housework here. Um, I'm going to say something, you know. <laughs> we kind of get to that boiling point and we want to voice um, how we're feeling about that. So we bring that up and we say, you know, I feel like I'm the only person doing any housework around here. This has, you know, been going on for so long. Um, um, you know, it's not fair. 
can you can you start pulling your weight or some people are really specific and they say can you do the dishes or can you you know make sure you do your own washing or whatever the case might be and then person a turns around and says to person b you know i'll, I'll do the housework when i want to do the housework or i'll do the duties that i want to do when i want to do them um, you're so controlling. Why are you trying to boss me around? Why are you trying to tell me what to do? And they label person B as being the controlling one. But actually, if we backtrack, the control is actually coming from person A and the control is coming from the inaction or the lack of responsibility. And so I hope that demonstrates to you what I mean by that covert manipulation where it may look like one person is the controller or the controlling one, but actually the control is coming from a deeper place than that and maybe coming from the other person. And then as soon as the other in relationship starts to bring that up and starts to talk about that, they get labelled as being controlling. And that's the real controller's way of staying in control because they know that most people don't like being labelled as controlling. So then they don't say anything, they step back um, and they don't put the pressure on person A just for the sake of not being labelled or called controlling. And so often in this dynamic, you will have someone that is um, more of the controller or more of the manipulator. And then the other person in that dynamic can be a little bit more of like the empath or the um, um, more passive um, and, and perhaps more codependent of the two. And so these dynamics actually, you know, they, they stay tied in together for quite some time because the controller needs someone that's empathic and understanding and always kind of says, you know, what's my part in it? I want to understand what my responsibility is here. And so they kind of rely on having people like that around them so that they don't ever have the focus put back on them, that the person that they're with is very self-reflective, very willing to take responsibility for themselves. And so they rely on that nature of that um, empathic person to, to kind of click in and keep them out of the focus. So I hope that in just explaining this dynamic and giving you a little bit more information about the dynamic and what happens and where the control is actually coming from, if someone says to you, you know, you're so controlling or stop being so controlling, you might want to have a conversation depending on the type of person that mentions that to you um, you know if you're in a healthy relationship and you feel comfortable and you have good communication skills together you can start to bring up this like you know well, okay who's really the controlling one here are you being controlling by your lack of action or your lack of willingness to take responsibility and waiting for you know the other person to, to say something about it um, and really nut out you know what is control what does it mean to be controlling there are several ways of being controlling and and sometimes control can come from inaction, lack of responsibility, silent treatment, those types of more covert or submissive behaviours can be controlling as well. And so overt control, you know, might be the type of control that these people are talking about when someone tells them what to do or bosses them around a little bit, you know, um, and that's more overt control rather than covert control, which is what they're doing in order to manipulate. So, you know, this um, topic can get quite complex. It's a little bit hard to talk about because it's talking about the two different people and how they interact together. And, of course, whenever we get two human beings in the same room, there are so many dynamics that come into play. But perhaps talking about this today has helped you to get your head around something. You know, maybe there's something going on in your life where you've been called controlling and you think, hang on a minute, I'm not controlling but, you know, I'm not going to be walked all over either. Um, and so sometimes there's some balance that can be brought in where you can become assertive and be assertive and not controlling and actually have the skills and the language to call the other person on their control. They may not even know that what they're doing is controlling um, and starting that control cycle. <laughs>